Hello, everyone. We are going to uh, create the same model or same house that we have been doing with Revit over the weekend, but now with Rhino. Rhino is different. As you can see, we have the four screens. We have the top view, front, right view. We can change the layout. And then here we have the perspective. We need all the views because uh, the way Rhino works is difficult from Revit. But the first thing is the we have to set the units. So you see that by default, the units are millimeters, okay? And that uh, by default, it's, it's millimeters. So if we uh, change here, if we right click and we click on unit settings, uh, we have to go to, in this case, we have inches. So we can go to inches. Okay, and now all the lines and all the stuff that we are doing, it's it's uh, inches. Okay, um, so let's follow the model. We have this uh, 132, 264, 180. Mm, here we don't have walls, we don't have roofs. We just have lines, surfaces, and volumes. And uh, to do this, I will start, there are different ways to do it, I will start creating lines then i will turn i will turn lines into polylines and then i will extrude that polyline into a volume the line here we have the menu uh, we have a lot of options so i usually type things if i type line now we are uh, drawing lines and i can do this and if the first dimension is 264 i can type 264 and that's it Okay, so this is a 264 inch line. If I want to make it uh, parallel, I can press shift. And now this is uh, either horizontal or if I press shift, vertical. Okay, so if I keep, if I hold this keep uh, shift, I have a straight line without an angle shift. Okay, so this is uh, 264. How can we check that this is 264? We have dimension. Pretty straightforward, linear, and I click here and there, and this is 264, okay, to delete it. Uh, what else? Uh, I can keep uh, going, uh, creating lines. I can type line again, or I can come to this menu and select the first option, line. So that was uh, 132, if I'm not wrong, 132 and 180, okay. So this is 132. Enter, shift, and now if I if you click enter, you repeat the last command. So if it, it was line, now I can type 180, shift, and there you go. So now these are the this is the outline of the wall. Now I have to do the wall itself, and the thickness was 12 inches. So I can use offset. Okay, so if you type offset and you select the distance, I don't know what is the default distance here, but in this case, we need 12 inches. And you see that if we click, we can uh, either go this way or that way. We have to go inwards and then enter, click inwards again, then enter, click inwards again. And now we have to close that so I can type line and close this, enter again, line. What if we want to cut this? There are different ways. I can trim or I can chamfer. This command here is fillet. If we click here, this is the chamfer. So chamfer means that it creates an angle between two lines. So I can select chamfer. And make sure that the distance is zero. And then you can click one, two, and then you have a chamfer. Enter, repeat the command. So here we have different lines. If we want to create a polyline, uh, we can either click here. So this is the polyline option. And we can, we could have done something like this. Okay, so it doesn't have the same dimensions, but now this is a polyline. But if we click here, there are only lines. Having polylines, it's, it's interesting. So we can either start as a polyline or we can select everything 
and we can select uh, this command join or we can type join here okay so we joined then all this is a polyline so with polylines we can create volumes and that's what we're going to do so i'm going to keep going i'm going to uh, draw all this stuff and then i will i will create the volume so this is 108 and 108 and 180. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Line 108. Shift, enter, and 108. Shift, enter, 180. Shift, and this is the opening. You can get rid of it. You can delete it. And what else? Uh, okay. So now I have. Uh, well, I can go seventy-two, twelve, twelve, and eighty-four. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the outline. So seventy-two, twelve. Line. That's, that's good. If you just type L and you have typed line many times, uh, Rhino things that you are going to type. So this is 72. Shift. Enter. 12. Shift. Enter. 12. Shift. Okay. So this is the opening now. I can get rid of it. If I want another, if I want to close this, I can do this, then another line, I can do that, and then I can apply the chamfer option, this and that. Yep. So let's go on. It's 84 and 132. So line 84. Enter eighty two that's one thirty two not one thirty two. Okay. No. Leave this and um, I can keep going, I can create offset or I can draw a line 12, another line here, 12, shift, enter. Now a line like this, another line like that and chamfer. Now I will turn everything into polylines, but so far this is it. Uh, so we have, we are almost, we're almost done with that. And now I have to read all this. Um, okay, so this is 38. I don't have this uh, thing here. Okay, let's start here, 60, 39. So from this, I have 60, enter, shift, and now L39. Shift. So I don't have this one. And now here we can go down. Uh, well, this is not here, but I don't mind because I know that this is 84, this distance. Okay, and then this is uh, 132, so I have to. So this line doesn't exist. It's this one. And now I have a chamfer. Isn't that? And now this line, I might need an offset, 84. So let's type. Offset distance 84. 
and this and this. And there we go. Now, chamfer. Enter. Sit. And now I have to open all that stuff here. Okay, all this. I'll let you do it. What I'm going to do is to create this wall and all this is going to be solid for me. Okay, but you have to do all these walls, the internal walls with four inch. So I'm going to, there is always, a, it's pretty straightforward. I want to extend this line up to this line so I can type extend. And you see that there is an option of extend. So select the boundary objects. I have to select this. Enter, I have to select the line I want to extend, please, and I extend it. Okay. So, uh, right, and then what, what I do, I want an offset and the distance 12 because it's an exterior wall in this direction. And now I can chamfer this. And uh, what would I uh, do here? Um, there's another option which is trim. If you select trim, uh, we can select cutting object objects. I select this and then I press enter and then I select this one and I cut this object. Okay, so there are different ways to do that, but this is it. Again, this is a solid block, but for you, you have to do it. This is a polyline and this is not a polyline. So we are going to turn all these into polylines. I select this. This is the same as Revit. If you click here and you go uh, leftwards, uh, you have um, a window that selects everything that it's within this, uh, that touches this window. If you click here and you go uh, rightwards, you select only what is within the window, okay? So it's not something that you just touch. It's something that has to do within the window. So if I want to turn all this into a polyline, I can do this. I can select join. And now this is a polyline and this is a polyline and this is a polyline. Okay. So what do I do once I have polylines? Uh, I have to uh, create extrusions. Extrusion means that I select this shape and I'm going to create a volume. It's a perpendicular volume. So just uh, type extrude, CRV, extrude. And now select objects or select curves. I can select one, two, and three, okay? And just click enter. And you see that we can go down or we can go up, uh, go all the way up okay, because uh, we don't know the, the height. So we have created something to great height. So uh, if you want to move in the perspective view, right click, not uh, shift right click. I usually, because I'm used to working with Revit and I click shift and right click and this is what happens. If you just click right click and move it, you can you can rotate uh, the view. And with the wheel, you can zoom in or zoom out. Okay, uh, so we have been working on this top view and now when you select something, you have different things. You have the curve. So if you select the curve, you select the, the polyline, or uh, you can select the extrusion. If you select the extrusion, you select the volume, or you can select the, what? The, well, either the curve or, or the extrusion. And the same thing here, okay? So be careful because you might think that you're selecting the uh, the wall itself. Uh, or the volume, and you're only selecting the shape that generated the volume. Be careful. Uh, so what's, what, what's next? We have to um, create the roof. Okay, so we have this roof here. Uh, so this is 36 here and uh, 120. The theory, I don't know if I explained that. We want like an overhang of 36 all around 
the, the walls. Okay, so we can offset or we can create an offset of uh, 36. And uh, now we have the, the, the where this shape starts. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to create a rectangle. It's just to show you other commands. You can create a rectangle. So we can click here and there. And look at this. Okay, so we have created this rectangle on the, at the top, not at the bottom. If you want to create this rectangle at the bottom, then you have to select, you have to use the 3D view, the perspective view, another rectangle. And if you want to start at this corner and end at this corner, then you have to select the 3D view, not the uh, not the top view, because with the top view, you don't know if you are selecting this point or this point or the midpoint. I don't know, you can, you can select uh, different points, but if we want to start at this specific plane, we have to select the point that it's at this plane. So what's next? Offset. I select this. Uh, what is the distance? 36. And we go upwards. Okay. So that's the footprint of the roof. I don't need this. I'm going to delete it just in case. And that's the, the footprint of the roof. Why do I know, uh, why do I want this? Because, uh, well, you see that we have a volume here and I'm going to create a shape and I'm going to intersect a triangular shape and this. In Revit is different. In Revit, we can create a roof, we can deal with the slope with the roof and then we can attach to top base. Here, it's different. Uh, we have a volume and then we have to create a shape and then we subtract this with the right slope. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so that's the shape and that shape, well, the, the thickness of that roof, it's not specified. Let's say that it's 12 inches too. Uh, so in the height of this point, is 120. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to create a shape that is like this all the way up because I want to subtract the volume from the shape that I'm going to do now. Okay, let's do it and you'll understand with that. Okay. Uh, so I have to start, I can create a line or a polyline. Let's work with a polyline element. And uh, here we go. So we are at this point. Okay. But now I have to switch to the, the front view. And be careful if you look, look at the line that we are doing here. Okay. So if, even if I'm in the front view and I think I'm going up, look at the perspective. It's a tilted line. If we want to make sure that it's a vertical line, I have to press shift. So if I press shift, this is uh, perpendicular. And how much? It's 120, it's the height of that point. So I type 120, I press shift, and this is where my uh, line starts. Okay, I created a polyline, but I think uh, if you, uh, if you don't press enter, uh, the line is not there. So if you're working with the polyline, you have to close the polyline. If you don't have a closed polyline, uh, you, you can't, uh, it, it, it doesn't show up. So let's work with the line. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to click on this corner. Uh, then I'm going to move to the front view. I have to type 120 and I have to press shift. And now I have a line shows up, that's the, the line. I can select this line and just for the sake of uh, knowledge of uh, knowing more uh, commands, I can click and type copy. And then uh, what can I copy from this point to this point? It's easier if we move to the 3D view and I copy the, the line here. Okay, so I have this line and that line and uh, the distance is 120. If I want to make sure, dimension, linear, 
and if I'm on the front view, I measure the height and it's 120. Can I measure things in a perspective? Let's find out linear dimension, this, this. Uh, weird, okay? So if we want to measure things, uh, we have to use top views, front views, or right views, it's better. Uh, so on the front view, I have this, and now I need the slope. The slope is five and 12, 12 horizontal, five vertical, regardless of the units. So if I want to create the right slope, uh, I'm going to create another line. Um, we can, to make sure that we are selecting the right point, I can go to the perspective, it's here. And then uh, I want to type 12, shift, enter. I select this point, I type five, shift, and now another line connecting this. So the slope is 12 horizontal, five vertical. So this is uh, what a five over 12 slope means. So that's the first uh, line. I can do the same here. I can do a line 12, then five, or let's create a mirror. Okay, so mirror. First, we have to select the object to mirror this one. Enter, then the mirror plane. Uh, the mirror plane starts, this is the midpoint, uh, but I don't select the midpoint here because I don't know what I'm selecting. I'm selecting the midpoint there. And now I uh, press shift, and you see that if I don't press shift, I don't know where the, the mirror line is. If I press shift, then I have this and that. What's next, chamfer? This, this, there you go. So that's the slope, five and 12. Okay, um, so what really matters is the thing that we have within this shape that I have created here. Everything else, we have to get rid of it. So I have to subtract, I have to create two volumes and then I have to subtract uh, the second volume the, from the first one, okay? So uh, once I have this shape, if I want to get rid of all the, of everything that I have above, I have to create another shape, okay? And now I'm going to create a polyline. Now I think I'm ready to create a polyline and I can select this point, this point, and that point, okay? And then I move to the front view and I do this and it doesn't matter what kind of shape this is, okay? So I can do something like that. And this is the line, this is a polyline that I'm going to use to extrude and then I will subtract the two volumes. So I type extrude, I move in this direction. Okay, so now what's next? I have to subtract this to that. Uh, so I have to do uh, not intersection. Here we have union. This is uh, this icon that we have here, the Boolean. This is very useful in, in Rhino. So we will keep using these options uh, a lot of times. Boolean union, and this is the difference. Difference means that I'm subtracting a shape from a volume from another volume. So let's click this, Boolean difference. The first uh, to subtract from, I want to subtract uh, this extrusion, but I want to keep subtracting this and this, okay? You don't have to press anything, you keep uh, selecting things, and then you, you select all the shapes that you want to subtract. Now, when we are done with this, we press enter, and we have to select the poly surface to subtract with. So that's the shape that we have created here. And now if I press enter, it should work. You go. Okay. 
Okay, so that's different from Revit. In Revit, I create the walls and I create the roof and then I attach. In Rhino, I have to create the volumes and uh, the way to create a tilted roof is this. I have all the walls and then I have to create that shape in the walls that I have created. Okay, what about the roof? I can get rid of this shape now because I don't need it. And I'm going to create the, the, the roof itself. So to create the roof itself, I can create another polyline here. And now I can go to this point, that point, and this point. Move here. I go uh, 12 inches shift go 12 inches up and now what about this hmm. uh, i don't have any yeah in revit i think it's more intelligent because if there's a parallel line revit has an option and you find that there's a parallel line here you don't so okay i didn't uh, finish the the polyline so that's why i i don't have it i'm going to do it again Polyline, one, two, three, go to the front view, 12, shift, and press enter, and it doesn't happen. Okay, so that's the, the oh, you, we can't work with polylines because, oh, we, we can't, okay, so the polyline is here. It's weird. Okay, I can't see it, but it's there. Interesting. Um, okay. Uh, what can I do now? I can, I should see this on the front view. I don't know why. Uh, but at least it's here. By the way, if you want to work, if you think that you have to zoom in or make the, the view bigger, you can double click here and then you are on this perspective. You double click here again and you then you go back to the, to the original layout. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do this and I'm going to uh, offset. So offset this. I want to select either I, I want to select the the curve or just the line. I'm going to select the line and then uh, the distance it has to be 12. Uh, but here I don't like this view so I'm going back to uh, this view. Okay, so I'm, I'm doing this for some reason. I can't see uh, this polyline here, but at least it's there. Okay, so I can do the same thing, another offset with this line. Type offset, select not the polyline, but the curve. Uh, the distance is 12, but I have to go to the front view, go up, and now I have the 12, but I don't see it but it's there. Okay. Uh, so I have a polyline here and I have two lines there and now I have to close this. So from this point, I have to create another line to make sure that I go up. I have to go up this way, it's there. So now I think I have everything I need because with a uh, chamfer, Okay, here I can see this, I can chamfer first this and this, good. Second, enter this and this, okay? It's important that everything is closed. And then uh, this and that. So you see that now we have all the lines here. 
I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this to make it clear. If I do this, I have two lines. I have the curve and I have the polyline. Let's get rid of the curve. I select this one too. Let's get rid of the curve. And now I just have polylines and line here. And now I'm going to select join. If I select join, I select the polyline, the lines, and other lines. Now everything is a polyline. And it's very important that this polyline is closed. Because what I'm going to do now is to extrude this. Extrude. And I start here, and where do I end? There. I have created this footprint, and I can start at this point, and I can end at this point. And there you go. Uh, can we change the, the view settings? If we click this arrow, uh, we have wireframe, that's by default. If we want to shade it, uh, we have shaded view. There are different options with rendered. And uh, I have this other view. And uh, I don't know, ghosted, what is it? Okay. You can explore this, we have different views that's good because it's like it's kind of transparent and we can see what what we have done well the model is not exactly like this you see that we have uh, this is a door so that's a wall and that's the opening so the opening has a, a hundred okay so uh, we should create something here uh, can we do it Yes, we can. Uh, so I'm going to create an auxiliary line. I go here. I press shift. If you press shift, you see that goes horizontally. So if you want to go up, we have to go back to the front view. And then if I press shift, you see that we are moving vertically. Uh, what's the height? Uh, 100. So 100, shift, and this is 100. It's not, it's there, but now we have a poly surface, we have another poly surface, we have a curve. So be careful with what we are selecting now. So once we have this reference, Uh, I can use this to uh, create this polyline here. So now I'm going to create a polyline starting at this point. Uh, press shift. And uh, doesn't work. I don't know. So I have to go back to the to this, pressing shift. And I don't have a snapping point here. Why? This is very important. By default, this is a snapping point. I have end and mid. So if there is a midpoint, I can. If there is an end point, I can. But what I want is perpendicular. So I have to activate perpendicular. And now with this perpendicular, we do have this reference point. Okay. And now we have to go up. But going up, I'd rather do it with the perspective because I have to come here and then I have to come here and come there. So now you see that we have this shape, but this is what you have to do in Rhino. You have to move from different views because probably if you're working only one view, you, you're not able to do something like that because we need different reference points. Well, okay. That's how uh, well this is my computer. It's, it's, uh, so Okay, uh, I had to close Rhino and open it again.
that uh, the only thing that's left is the extrusion. So I have to select this shape, and type extrude, and then I have to go in this direction. I can type, I can use uh, a view because that's the, or I can type uh, the extrude width and it's uh, it's 12, but I can type here and that's the wall. Yep. So now uh, we have completed the, the assignment. More things in Rhino. Uh, we are just modeling this with volumes. Uh, in Rhino, we have to work with layers. In Revit, we have walls, roofs. In Rhino, we have layers and that's very useful. Uh, so I recommend you before starting, uh, we can create different layers. So layer one can be uh, walls. And I can change the color of this layer to red. And if I select everything that it's related to walls, you can select everything. And this is the default layer. I can change it easily to walls. Now it's red. And now I can create a new layer, uh, roofs, and change the color to green. And now I can select this. I can change this to layer roofs. Okay, uh, that's the fold. Oops. Um, this is the current layer. If I want to change, uh, if I want to draw something on layer roofs, now everything I do, if I draw a polyline, it's in a green line, and that will be a roof. If I want to change to walls, uh, then uh, what I'm doing here is a wall. Okay. So probably we have to set this before starting, but when we have only a few objects, it's easy. Uh, we have only walls and roofs, but before starting a complex model in Rhino, we must figure out how many layers we're going to have. We can keep adding layers at any time, but uh, having an idea of what we want, it's, uh, it's easy. Okay, so that's the same house in Rhino. First time it will take you maybe 20, 30 minutes, but it's something that we can do in a couple of minutes because it's a very simple model. 